Hello and welcome to It's Not Over with Dr. Dan Farrell. My name is Jordan and it's good to be here this week on this Wednesday. I hope you're able to listen and stay tuned for the whole show. It's only about 14 and a half minutes long or so and I believe Dr. Farrell will deliver a very powerful message. Um, some of the things that you may be listening to may trouble you, but search the scriptures and ask God to reveal truth to you. All right, Dr. Farrell, how are you? Doing good. Uh, yesterday, we closed with 1 Corinthians 13. So let's look at that again. Brian, will you read that for us in verse uh, 8 down to verse 13? Verse 8 to 13. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three. But the greatest of these is charity. Okay. Now, what we see here then is the Apostle Paul is dealing with something. He says, charity never faileth. Do we have charity today? I think so. Maybe I think not as much do. as we should. <laughs> right. Now, do we have prophecies today? Well, we got written prophecy. Mm -hmm. We have a more sure word of prophecy. That's correct. But um, do we have the ability to speak in unknown tongues? I'm not saying God couldn't do it if he wanted to. But have you ever? I've never done it. Have you ever done it? I ever spoken in tongues? Besides when you were like six months old? Uh, I, I, when in high school, I spoke Spanish. Did you? Okay. Mm -hmm. And I, in college, I spoke a little bit of Greek. A little German. Uh, we're speaking German. in tongues right now. We're speaking in English. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, people that listen, they don't see Those are the, the only stuff. unknown tongues, though, that I've spoken. Yeah, right. Your, your English is usually an unknown tongue. Um, <laughs> no, Spanish and Greek. Oh, okay, okay. Um... Here's what I'm saying to you. I believe that what these scriptures are telling us is that the word of God is that which is perfect has come. Now, let, I'm going to see if I can prove it to you. And I hope people listening by Sermon Audio, YouTube will, will grasp this. I want you to get James chapter 1. I want you to get Hebrews chapter 4.12. Okay? Hebrews 4.12. And I want to show you that the word of God is what is mentioned here. Now, will you notice in verse 10... For when that which is perfect has come. It didn't say when he which is perfect or who is perfect. It's talking about something that's neuter, something that's neutral. When that which is perfect, then that which is in part. Now, what is in part? It's all these tongues and healings and prophecies and revelatory knowledge. That shall be done away like scaffolding. When the house is finished, take the scaffolding away. Mm -hmm. Now, Paul said, verse 11, when I was a child, I speak as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Mm. I don't need the childish things anymore. Right. So, you know, the little bicycle, the tricycle, the rattle, the, 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 the toys, whatever, those things were needed. My primer books were necessary at one time. I don't need those anymore. Right. You see? Because now, verse 12, we see through a glass darkly. But then face to face, now I know in part, but then shall I know even as I also am known. Now I want you to notice that whatever it is that's going to be completed and perfected is likened to a mirror. Will you notice that in verse, thir verse 12? It's likened to a looking glass. All right, James chapter 1, verse 22 through 25. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continue therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Amen. Now, will you notice that the Word of God is definitely what's mentioned, and it's likened to a looking glass. Yes. That you look into it, and you the Word of God, and you see what manner of man you are. You're convicted. You're convinced. But then you walk away and forget. Well, you're a forgetful hearer. Mm. You know, do something about your sin. 
Right. God has revealed something to you through his word. All right, now I want to show you something else. Hebrews 4.12, what does that say? For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Now, this means that the word of God is like an x-ray machine. It knows you inside out. Well, you notice verse 12, but then face to face. Now I know in part, like looking through a smoky glass, Mm -hmm. but then I shall know even as I am known. Now, these two things, the word of God is likened to a mirror and it's likened to something that knows you inside out. And that's exactly what Paul is referring to here in 1 Corinthians uh, 13 and verse 12. Mm -hmm. So when that which is in part shall be done away with, when that which is perfect is come. The Bible was completed around 96 A.D. Now we've got a completed Bible. And of course, you know what the church fathers say? They don't they don't notice any apostolic gifts. When the apostles went off the scene, mm-hmm. so did the apostolic signs and wonders. Mm-hmm. And so what's happened today is the devil, I think, has resurrected and revived a facsimile of these New Testament, you know, fantastic miracles, mm-hmm. but they're pseudo, right? They're mm-hmm. not they're fake. Mm-hmm. And you've gotten a bunch of goofball preachers, uh, men like Jimmy Swaggart, Mm -hmm. the Kenny Copelands, the Benny Hens. Oh, yeah. You know, Joyce Myers. Joyce Myers and all these goofballs that these people are charlatans. They're after money. That's they're right. they're fakers. They're phonies. And now they have paved the way for a more worldly religionist mm-hmm. that just basically has married society mm-hmm. and brought in society. And that's why we were talking about off <clears throat> off uh, off air. I'll tell you what, we don't need those um they don't need these charismatic things anymore. Mm-mm. All you do is just have a rock concert. Now they're cursing in the pulpit. They're doing lewd things. Drinking in the pulpit. Drinking in the pulpit. Really tell you the truth, um, the average secret sense of church today, many of them, uh, they're they're less spiritual than Saturday Night Live. Right. It's when just, they've also found out a lot of that stuff turns off people. The running through the that's the, right the halls and throwing the hands up and th- people they get freaked out by it. And so they're now they they're should. just want to uh, yeah they should and but now they're just wanting an emotional experience. And so they mm-hmm. get when they do the whole, uh, what is it, seven eleven? You know, yep. sing the same mm-hmm. song seven lines eleven times or whatever it is. Um, they they just get this emotional, and they, the music yeah. isn't necessarily rock out. Now, they, from time to time, they do rock out when it's just fun. This is fun time, right. not worship time. Mm-hmm. Well, you know what that is that that's a mantra. Mm-hmm. It says Eastern religion. And it puts you, this re- repetition, it puts really? you in a trance, just like television does, it lowers your mind's defenses. You know, no thinking is taking place. Now it's just whatever, whatever's coming at you. It's this emotional experience. And that's what's going to move you and lead you as opposed to the Word of God. And I wonder if it does lower your inhibitions where it opens the door for demonic spirits. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Absolutely. That's, Definitely. What this that's United, why you see manifestations. That's Hillsong United is all about, man. You listen to their songs. It's like, good night. They've got like one main phrase. They've got mm-hmm. one chorus. I mean, like the chorus that they sing like five times. Mm-hmm. And it's and you listen to it, and it's very worshipful. Mm-hmm. It's very, It does get you very like feeling-based. It's not necessarily hard out rock. I mean, it's not necessarily something we play at Morningstar, but it's very emotional feeling. But it's just rep- so, it's repeating. So the songs are packed full of doctrine, right? Yeah. yeah and, not at all. No, <laughs> not at all. And they, so no a lot doctrine. of them, you listen to them, if you were to write it out and just read it, it doesn't make sense. Mm. Really? It doesn't, a lot of them don't make sense. And so, if they always sing to God, a g- very general mm-hmm. God. They never say God of the Bible. They rarely even say Jesus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it is it it is this is now the vestibule into the one world church mm-hmm. and the the synagogue of Satan mm-hmm. and it was where we're moving. Mm-hmm. And of course the emergent church, of course, the just it's it's not even Christianity anymore. No. It's new age um, Right. Right. Which really in a way, your assembly God, Church of God, Nazarenes, any any of them, even some of these American Baptist Convention Baptists, they were somewhat charismatic. I would say this, that at least they had the facsimile of being Christian. You know, they, they would say Christ is the only way to heaven, but mm-hmm. they brought in all this junk. Mm-hmm. But now, they, like someone just said, it's not doing it anymore. It's turning people off. 
right. running the bases, screaming and yelling and hollering and hooping. Uh, that that guy, that Bible, what was it, Hank Hanegraaff or whatever his name is, okay. the Bible, Bible answer, answer man. man. Yeah, that's he right. actually went into some of these places and did some taping. And I'm telling you, I listened to some of these services like the Pensacola Revival and the Toronto Blessing. Mm. And, man, it sounded like a barnyard. I right. heard pigs. Oh, yeah. I heard horses. I heard cows and chickens and roosters. And then there was places where I heard an elephant. And these are people under supposedly under the spell of the Holy Spirit that are just screaming and yelling. Women rolling around with their dresses coming up over their head. I mean, it's just it's crazy. And and of course the immorality is horrible. Mm. I Anything see one goes. video. There's this one. <laughs> you guys want to look it up? You can look it up. You're gonna laugh. It's funny. But it's one of these run the bases churches, and there this guy. It wasn't even the preaching; it was just singing. Sure. This guy gets up and sings a song, and all of a sudden, people just start running the bases. And it's on YouTube. I think it's called Crazy White People Church. Or oh something yeah, like I that. saw that one. And and this one, one guy the takes his jacket off and he's swinging around. He hits the pr- he hits the singer, and the singer's like covering his jacket. And he's all. Like, and another guy jumps into the Baptist. <laughs> jumps into the gets- baptistry. <laughs> You know, it, it's funny, but then it was no, not funny goodness. because, I mean, what blasphemy right. that is right. to to treat the Lord's church like that and the, his word like that. Mm-hmm. And no people reverence. defend it. They're like, well, you know, you get excited about a football game, right? Can't we get excited about church? Well, I don't think at a football game, which I even think some of that stuff is stupid. Yep. But I'm saying they're not trying to worship God. There's no pretense. Right. Right. My Bible says, First Corinthians 14, let all things be done decently in order. Mm-hmm. God's not the author of confusion. Mm-hmm. Paul says it too in chapter 14. He says this. He says, uh, if therefore the whole church be come together into one place and all speak with tongues, and there come in those that are unlearned or unbelievers, will they not say, ye are mad? Mm-hmm. You're crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's Somebody, that YouTube channel right. Called. And they're right. They are right. And what tongues was he talking about, though? Languages. He, he wasn't talking above this unknown, crazy, angelic tongue. I know. They asked. And the other thing is that they speak in tongues, and they all do it, first of all. Like, everybody in the church is doing it. And where's the interpreter? Right. Yeah. Well, yeah, they threw the Bible out a long time ago. I mean, the Bible doesn't you matter. You have to. Well, the Bible says, let it be by two, no more than two or three, mm-hmm. and that by course. It's got to be a man. Let your woman keep silent in the church. Mm-hmm. If there be no interpreter, shut your mouth. Mm-hmm. And it's an intelligible language. It's Spanish. It's Swahili. It's something. But what's going on today? Who cares about the Bible? They don't care about the Bible, and they're going to do what they want to do. Mm-hmm. Now, we're going to talk about some of the history tomorrow. Those of you that are uh, watching this program, you better not miss tomorrow on Friday's program. And uh, this charismatic uh, movement, again, is still alive and well. It's not as popular, but it's alive and well. All right. We thank you for listening, and we want to encourage you to go to sermonaudio.com slash it's not over. And uh, there you can find the archive of all of the radio shows that have been done over the years. And then also, if you go to YouTube, we'd ask that you would uh, please subscribe to our channel. You can find it by going to the Browse Channels menu and then searching for It's Not Over. And there uh, is a uh, red button that says subscribe. If you would click on that and then also share some of your favorite uh, episodes with your friends and family, uh, it would be a real encouragement to us here at uh, It's Not Over. And finally, uh, you can go to our church website, msbc.com, where you can see uh, and hear some of uh, uh, the latest uh, uh, program. Or you can go to morningstarnetwork.org, which is kind of the umbrella network for all of our ministries here at uh, Morningstar Baptist Church. And uh, we are uh, still doing that uh, promotion, I guess you could call it, where uh, Uh, Dr. Farrell's latest book, Soul Winning, Why So Important. We'd love to send that to you. And uh, all we ask is uh, just for a generous donation of $50 or more. And so if you think that uh, you feel the Lord leading you to uh, bless this ministry, we would truly appreciate it. And here's Dr. Farrell to close. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 4, verse 1, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. If you're going to a church like that, I would, I would challenge you, please get out of a church like that. Stop subsidizing that church. And first of all, question whether you are truly saved. And then make sure you get a hold of a pastor that can teach you the, 